One mistake I see people making is not having a passion project. What's up friends, Paul here. Welcome to The Beautiful Mess, where we talk about tools and tactics to improve your life. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about passion projects since uh, that was something that really had a big impact on my life. Uh, Just to give you a little bit of a backstory, I ended up doing a passion project while I was interning with the great Corey Hyman from Likeable Art. And uh, that was probably a catalyst that helped me move further in uh, my creative journey. Uh, Basically, I ended up making a video, a lyric video for my brother, who's a musician. And that video ended up going on national TV and they used it a couple times. You know, maybe it wasn't one of the most popular programs that it was used on. But however, it was like a big accomplishment to me. And it was one of the catalysts to say, hey, this is good. This is like something I should keep doing. Uh, So I highly encourage you, if there's something that you're super passionate about, why not have a passion project? Make it part of your regular schedule, like where you carve out time for that special passion project. Because, you know, life is busy. There's a lot of things begging for your time and attention. And why not dictate what some of that time is going towards instead of mindlessly, you know, letting people you know, steal two hours here and there. It's like, no, I've got this time that I'm going to do this. You know, let, let's let plan it outside of this time. So um, it's something that has really had a big influence on my life. And um, what what are some of the benefits of having a passion project? So to me, what it is, is a great way to hone your skills. This is a great time to figure out like, what is it that I'm passionate about? But then also on top of that, maybe it's related to your field that you're already working in. Maybe you can actually look at a project that you can do that you'll actually just add an element. You're, you're going to say, hey, in this project, I'm going to try. I'm going to experiment using these techniques. Uh, maybe you're going to try using a new skill that you've never done before. Uh, that That's exactly what I did. I had you know, made this lyric video and I really, you know, this was probably one of the first times that I did anything like that. And um, it ended up being a great experience, great learning experience. And the feedback that I got on it was great. Um, and it was just uh, a good, good uh, experience overall. So, um, and, you know, the thing is, too, is like when you're doing something that you love, it's not like you're going to get stuck and just feel like, Oh, I, you know, I just need to complete this project because so-and-so needs it by this time. It's like, no, I'm, I'm excited about this project. And, um, even if I hit road, like roadblocks in the way, this is just like a step that I need to take because that roadblock is going to actually, uh, move me further along. So it's, it's like, I'm excited about that roadblock. That roadblock is going, (laughs) it's, I'm going to, I'm going to jump over that roadblock because I, I love what I'm doing. I'm super passionate about it. Um, so another example of a passion project actually would be this podcast because it it had always been a dream of mine of starting a podcast and it never happened until last year when I was talking with my buddy Spencer and I was just like, Hey, um, you know, we were just talking about gear and just stuff that we're, we're passionate about. And, uh, he was like, man, we should like totally record this. We should document it because Gary Vaynerchuk would say, document don't create and so we decided to run full steam with this idea and we ended up um starting the beautiful mess we started it messy we actually started it without a name so if there's a passion project that you're interested in don't be afraid to start messy you know that's that's probably the beauty about being creative it's like you can dare to be um messy in what you do and um to learn from those mistakes that you make early on uh there were definitely I, I'm still learning as things go on, but I would say that I've improved my ability to make a podcast from just a production standpoint, uh, the time that it takes, the um, the presentation, how I write out my notes ahead of time for a podcast episode. And so it's just been a great learning experience. And I'm going to actually maybe give you a little hint into one of my new passion projects that I'm hoping to start here uh, in a little bit. 
uh, I'm excited to hey, something that I would do sometimes was like I would write these musical thoughts. Um, for some of you, you might not know, I was a music major, so music is one of my passions that I have. However, I kind of got burnt out with music because um, I was doing it in a job that I just kind of felt like creatively, I was just getting kind of burnt out. Um, it was a great job, love the people and everything, but like I just hit like a creative wall where I was just like, I, I just can't, you know, feel like I'm energized and excited. You know, there were, there were of course moments where you get that j jump or jilt. Um, but like doing the work that I was doing, I just felt like a little bit drained. And so, uh, it was super exciting to be, um, you know, making this leap that I made. And actually I think the passion project that I did was one of the catalysts that made that leap possible because it was something I could point to. Even though it was just like a side project, I wasn't going to be, you know, paid for it. It was like, hey, this is a work that I did. So keep that in mind. If there's like a, if you want to move closer to working in your field, think about what you can do. Um, I also did a kind of, kind of a passion project at my previous job before I made the transition because I was like, hey, um, I think what you should do for this project that they were, they were basically going to sell this product. And I was like, hey. Uh, I think it'd be great if we made a video for it. And so I took it upon myself to make a video for that project. And it was just like, I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to say anything. Uh, but I was just like, this is something I was passionate about, excited about. Um, one thing I'm super excited about is YouTube. I don't know. It's, it's just like one of the best platforms out there because it's like a, a free search engine for people to post content uh, that you can reach a wider audience than you would normally. Uh, it's a great platform for businesses. You just need to know how to use it. And um, if you ever are interested in using YouTube to your advantage, please reach out to me. I am super passionate about YouTube um, and would love to find ways that you can use YouTube to your advantage. Um, so yeah, my, my hope is to actually get back into music like as far as like a passion, like a, a side thing that I do. Uh, so my hope is to create these musical thoughts. It's something I would do uh, actually back when I was in the music job that I was working. Uh, I would occasionally just turn on my phone's uh, recorder and just record just me playing piano, playing an instrument. Um, and it was just like a fun way. And I would just send it to like my brother, who's also a mu musician. And it was just like a fun way of like... Um, continuing your craft just like making up new things um and it's like very little pressure and so my hope is to create kind of like a shorts channel uh just like where i just you know maybe turn on the camera once a week or uh however often i feel inspired and just you know record a little musical thought and share that um what one thing that i always I, i've done a little bit of this is film composing um just some small like friends, friends films. I've done like a little um, part of the soundtrack for that. So like I love film composers. Film composers, I think, are like the present day classical artists. Like they embody many of the elements, you know, people, I think, stay too much like in the past a little bit like and I love classical music. Don't get me wrong. It's just I think there is this mentality that because it's old, it's better. And I think that there is a true art form happening when people compose music for film. Uh, it's, it's the taking the listener, the viewer on a journey. It's augmenting a scene so that you can tell a richer story. Because if you take away music from a film, it, it's just, it's kind of lifeless in many ways. Uh, the, the, music is kind of like the heart and soul of a film. If, if you have a good composer like Hans Zimmer, uh, John Williams, you know, you, you name it, like it, they, they make a world of difference in a film. And so, um, I, I just feel like there's such a richness to film music. And what I've heard is like the best composers for film, you don't even notice a soundtrack. It's like, in the background you you just like hear it and um it just enriches the viewing experience but it's not like the highlight um yeah yeah so that that's 
something. Maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll create shorts and just like create a soundtrack for for other or shorts or something. Re- remix them. Um, so yeah, I think what it what it is is like you can end up um, kindling a passion for something, and this is a great way to experiment. Like you're not necessarily committing to something long term. I mean, it's great if you do, but maybe it's just like a short project that you just want to work on. Maybe it's just a couple weeks that you're going to do this. And so it's a great way for you to dabble in things and discover things that you love to do. Um, Some examples of passion projects that you might consider would be like from the creative field. This is what comes to mind for me is making a video, whether that's uh, a video that you post on YouTube, just share with your friends, just share with your family, whatever it is, uh, just make like a video. You can do it documenting something that you're doing uh, just to kind of get that validation of like, I did this. Or it could be, you know, making a creative uh, short video of like your day. Um, that That's like a fun way of like showing people a day in the life of you, you, you know. Uh, give them a little uh, peek into your life. Um, you could do a podcast. That's a great way of like just you don't even need video. Although I highly recommend if you're recording it, might as well turn on the camera anyways uh, and then use that to post it wherever you want. But a podcast is a great way for you to share your thoughts, your ideas and um, to allow others to learn from your experiences and what you're journeying through. Uh, another idea is in music, like I was explaining with my passion project, uh, finding little ways to maybe you just learn a piece and play it for others. You know, you, you, it doesn't have to be complex, but, um, there's a joy in sharing something that you create not only for you, but for the listener. Uh, some of the one special thing about music, unlike other art forms or, um, like other goods, like for example, a chocolate cake that I make, only certain people that taste it can appreciate that chocolate cake. Whereas a piece of music that you can play for somebody, everyone in that room can hear it and appreciate the beauty of that music. Uh, So that's an interesting way of viewing the good in uh, music and art. Um, Obviously, a piece of art could be also similar to the food. It's like only certain people can enjoy looking at it if it's like a, you know, something drawn or art. But that's another way that you can have a passion project. Maybe you pick up some, you know, paints and you decide like, hey, I'm just going to pick up a canvas and just have fun. Or I'm going to watch a YouTube tutorial and learn how to, you know, paint a pretty picture. Uh, Don't underestimate YouTube University. There are plenty of great um, things that you can learn on YouTube. So that definitely, especially like if you're just looking to dabble in something like YouTube University will probably give you enough to get started, whether that's learning an instrument or uh, taking up a new skill. That's that's a good place to start, I feel like, without spending any money. It's just YouTube. You can learn a lot on YouTube. Uh, the other thing that I recommend is another passion project would be writing. And for this, one idea is just set aside a time of day that you're just going to write. You just sit down, write, because that's like the hardest thing is just sitting down and doing it. No, It's just like once you get into the momentum of doing it, you're good. You're good. And so this is probably one of those atomic habit ideas that you want to make it as easy as um, visible and as like and make it rewarded so that you're encouraged to keep with it. Because, um, you know, when it's it's out of sight, out of mind, you're less likely to be like, hey, I would love to write right now. It's like, oh, I have to, you know, open my computer, open this note program, open a Google Doc. And then I've got to, you know, have this creative genius come down and, you know, fuse me with creative juices. And it's like, no, no, you just have to like make it simple, make it easy to start. Um, don't don't overcomplicate things. And that's one of the things that I'm learning from this book, Effortless. And again, I'm hoping to talk about this book soon. I'm, I'm a little ways into it. And it's a great read by Greg McKeon, I believe is his name. And one thing he talks about is the importance of 
not overcomplicating thing. We humans love to complicate life. We love to put all of these, uh, you know, things in our way to actually achieving our goals. Like he, he was talking about some examples where, you know, he just realized like, oh, like it actually doesn't have to be that complicated to get the end result. I'm just making it more complicated. Um, I think he talks about his son was an Eagle Scout. Like he wanted to do his Eagle Scout project and it, they just got like, you know, it just the last part of it was like, you know, really hard for them to finish. And so what he ended up doing was it's like, hey, what what is it like the bare bones? Like what what does completion look like? Because often we don't have a clear vision of what complete looks like. And that's so important to define for yourself because the world can tell you, your friends can tell you, people can tell you like you need to do this, 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 this in order for it to be good, for it to be done. And that might not actually be true and it might actually hinder you from getting anything done because it's so important to realize that better uh, is, you know, working towards something is better than perfection because if you get caught up in the perfectionist mindset and I'm, you know, probably one of the worst at it sometimes where you just get so focused on like, ah, oh, I got to make this just right. Otherwise, it's not worth sharing with anyone. Or um, I, I have to have the perfect conditions to get started. Uh, I need there not to be rain outside because rain, you'll hear it in the microphone or something. You know, like you think of all these excuses to get started. And in the end, will it really matter? Uh, one thing that I was just watching a Matt Diavella YouTube video and Matt Diavella talks about this thing. It's like worry in many cases is fruitless. Like, and one of the people that he quoted, it has this like mentality where it's like five and five idea where it's like, if it's not going to matter in five years, you should only spend like five minutes worrying about it. So like that's, that's, you know, the reality is like, think about five years from now that this thing that's super, you know, scary, super, um, intimidating in five years, will it actually matter? Probably not. Uh, and another thing is like, if you want to start like a YouTube channel or any kind of creative, whether it's a blog or what, whatever, um, keep in mind that your first attempts aren't necessarily going to be great. They might be messy, but that's okay. Be okay with that. Give yourself permission for the next couple weeks to make, you know, maybe not the best work. Like, obviously work towards good work, but like, don't get caught up on making something that's, you know, top notch just now because you need to take those steps. Um, and the more that you work on something, the better you'll get, uh, the better, um, you'll, you'll improve in that area. And so stick with it, stick with it, especially if you have, a, have that passion for that thing. Um, keep, keep that, keep that fire alive. Um, and one of the other things that, um, like you have to realize that sometimes you just have to be, you have to deliver. And many, many different people talk about this. At some point, you just have to let your work go out into the world. If, if, if you're planning to share it, because, um, it's like the least viable prod product, I think is like a business kind of term it's like basically what is it that you can release that's going to um allow you to get get started and hey, one of the he's got many different examples in this effortless book of people that you know were approaching this complicated thing um in a complicated manner instead of just viewing it simply from another angle and this is where sharing your ideas with others can really bear fruit and you can see things in a different light. Um, he was talking about, I think the Amazon shopping experience. And one of the issues that they had in the Amazon shopping experience early on was that you had to like fill in your name, then hit next. You had to fill in, you know, your address, then hit next. And there were so many steps just to uh, get the shopper through there. And what they realized was like, this is a hindrance to getting people to actually, you know, make a purchase convert. And so what they 
decided, you know, they were in a meeting with, with um, some people and he was like, what if you just do a one page? <laughs> and it was just like, oh, it's like, why, why not? Um, that, that's brilliant. Um, or there was also the example of, of Steve Jobs and like, I think it was like the DVD burner that they were creating for Apple. And these guys were coming up with this very complicated process. You know, it's, it's a very complicated, you know, process burning discs or whatever. And what he said is like, <laughs> I think he went to the whiteboard and just drew like a square. He's like, this is the window. I want to drag this file, this video or whatever onto this um, window and just hit burn. And that's it. Like, keep it simple. You don't need all of these selections or uh, options because the more friction that you create, the more likely that you're not going to get started, the more likely that you're just going to spin your wheels and not go anywhere. Um, so it's, it's important to realize like, am I overcomplicating this? Is there a simpler way? And what is that? How can I get started now or finish this within this time frame because done is often better than perfect. Whew. So the moral of the story is start a passion project, start it messy, be okay with uh, you know sharing it sooner than you're you know made it that you know maybe ship at 90%. Once you're at 90%, be okay shipping it if it you know you hit a deadline or something, just ship it out and uh, learn from that experience because one thing that a lot of YouTubers mention is like it's better to make a hundred videos um, okay than to make one video that's perfect because you're gonna learn so much during that hundred videos and uh, so keep that in mind maybe set yourself a deadline for these projects like hey I'm gonna release X number of blog posts within this set amount of time every week on Friday or whatever it is you know set that deadline so that you have something to work towards and pub publish it out there in the world. And so that that's all I have for today. If you want to be in part of the messy fam, I'd love for you to be with us. Uh, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow all that good stuff. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcasts, you name it. Um, Facebook, all those great places. And uh, we'd love to connect with you. If you want to write to me, uh, feel free to write to me at, uh, or just like go to my social media. So Paul Didis at Paul Didis, wherever you basically find social media, that's probably where I'm at. And so write me a DM, love to hear from you, love to connect, uh, hear about your passion projects. What are you working on? What are you excited about? Um, or maybe there's a way for us to collaborate on a project. Um, would love to hear from you. So Keep up the good work. And until next time, my friends, stay messy.